How y'all doing this evening? So I looked out the porch and saw the sunset and I had to come out here. Look, I can't I can't make make this stuff up. Um you know I said slingshot engaged. So what we have the opportunity here is you know we're replicating what we could do with irrigation we've had 30 inches of rain but we'll talk about water management uh, with the you know our monocrops have had a tough time this year being waterlogged and the weed acts to just draw moisture out um, so these beans have not missed a beat and uh, this this variety has the height has stayed in check so as you know I like to push crops a uh, short plant is is a great opportunity to start building plants like you see here and this is what foliar feeding does and the attention to detail this is what foliar feeding does you know you can't just call the co-op and say do this do this and they just run out there on a hot spell and, and throw some stuff on your beans and it's going to be magic. Everything here has been done right before dark, right before rain, and right before a cold front. And those little bursts right here builds plants like this right here. I mean, we can find them left and right out here. They just, they just stare at you. But anyway, so there's that. Well, I want to talk a little bit about dicamba. Sour subject right now. I know it's serious, uh, but it was never meant to be a rescue. I was, I was a landscape contractor out of college, and it, it, I mean it was a big deal. We had about ten employees at one time, and uh, I took care of hundreds of acres of turf, and we wouldn't apply dicamba past, you know, April twentieth or so. People had rose bushes or tomatoes in the garden and I know the formulation is different but in this context how do we use dicamba as a tool well for wheat it's labeled apply it before joint and in my latitude that's usually in mid-April so we use canopy to back up the shortstop if you will this took 22 ounces of dicamba you know we really didn't have much other than a little bit of hen bit out here but that torched that hen bit, and then we got the soybeans up. So the, by the time that dicamba ran out of fuel, if you will, we had a stand of soybeans in between the wheat, and we were pretty much locked shut. So we used that canopy to stay clean, and you can't find one single weed out here in this field. Um, so anyway, that's my two cents with that. It's not, you know, we just need to use this technology a little bit different and in this context I think it's pretty valuable okay so water dicamba I don't know that's all I got but. I'm telling you it's it's amazing what you can do so I'll talk a little bit about the Disney rule. I know I think th these things are random, uh, but I'm all on my soybeans. Soybeans are my favorite crop. You know, I think we need to start re reallocating our budget. We've got great treats on soybeans. We're using planters. We have herbicide technology. We can relay intercrop. We can use canopy. So, the money that we save here using manure as our fertility on the wheat, lowering the wheat population, use radishes as weed suppression and inserve and biodrilling. We spent about another fifty dollars out here on some foliar, some triad. So yes, that's another fifty dollars an acre, but it's increased these uh, yield potential of the beans. And I wouldn't have spent that if we wouldn't have kept getting these rains an opportunity. So I talk about Another tangent here, duck hunt. You remember when your friends would leave and you would just take that duck hunt gun right up to the TV screen and see if you could get to about level 37 and there's about 19 ducks going a million mile an hour? 
Well, if we have tram lines like you're looking at right here and we have the opportunity to come out in a crop and change our mind on a daily basis, that's why I've made the uh, more applications out here because as we keep getting every rain, the beans keep looking better and better and better, it's worth, it pencils out to add more beans after we've made, you know, 20, 22 nodes on these soybeans. So if everything's just a delayed decision and you don't have to be on either either camp here. You can just you know, farm your own farm. But you ought to try this. I've talked to several farmers here in the last month or so and they're starting to understand my thinking of you know, this isn't all about getting top bin busting wheat yields. It's to use wheat as canopy, as a water manager, and to leverage this dicamba extend technology. And be able to integrate cover crops in there. And if you have manure, um, you know, banding it. And uh, it's going to be interesting uh, working on this manure tank. Uh, the idea now is to. Uh, inject manure and put two uh, probably air seeders on either side maybe 10 15 inches no. apart really capitalize on that plant multiplication get this ginormous bush and lower seeding population even more for next year so anyway i think i've rambled on enough but uh you know we're we're nearly canopied shut out here i don't know what these suckers will make but there's going to be spots that are I think we'll be in the 80s. I mean, it's you've seen the pods. It's pretty, uh, pretty incredible, and it's been fun documenting this, and got a lot of new ideas for next year. Thanks for watching.